<laughs> Hi again, friends. Punk here from North 44. Thanks so much for checking in again. It's starting to feel like spring is here, but it's Maine, so you can never be too sure. Maddie and I are busy as hell regardless. Ah! Oh, starting seeds. Keeping seedlings alive. Fixing machinery. Getting ready to hatch out the next generation of poultry. Working our day jobs. For those who don't know, carpentry is our real job and we run a small product packaging shop right here on the farm. Draining the garden plots. Buttoning up the last of the winter projects. Finishing farm stand products. Tending to our poultry. And sowing spring cover crops. What does that mean? to work, pal. I can get my gloves on. Okay. So, cover cropping is an integral part of organic farming and gardening. Uh, this is the PVO soil builder mix. This is from Fedco Seeds up the road from us in Clinton. And it's a mix of field peas, oats, and hairy vetch. And it is March 30th or 31st today. And this particular mix, in order to have been worth it, uh, needs uh, 60 to 90 days of growth. Um, this plot is uh, going to be for uh, string beans. So we're planting first week of June. That gives us just over 60 days of growth. Uh, should be worth it, hopefully. Bare dirt may look clean and pretty, but it's not necessarily happy dirt. There's an entire network of microorganisms and nutrients in there that need vegetation to retain their structure. Cover cropping in between vegetable crops provides them with what they need, fixes nitrogen for future crops to utilize, helps keep soil from eroding, and can be tilled under at planting time, providing vital decaying organic matter for the soil biology and for your next crop. Farmers commonly refer to it as green manure. Big room. I take my chances of frozen days. You don't pop up. I don't go to church on Sunday. I take my water for the whiskey. But I know my God and he knows me. So someone asked me if I'd give some background information on us and how the farm came to be. I don't know if anyone else will really give a damn, but 
Once I started thinking through how to explain it all, it occurred to me that the events of the last eight years leading up to all this have been entirely serendipitous. I don't want this to be wicked fucking boring, so it's gonna go fast. Just try not to lose me. We were living and working in Providence, Rhode Island, and part of an awesome art scene at the Monahasset Mill. We had a successful carpentry business and we were at the top of our game. My phone rang about 185 times per day. There was never any time for anything else. I started to have regular panic attacks and various other freakouts. We escaped to my aunt and uncle's farm in Albion, Maine to decompress. Go ahead. That's your best one. We brought tools and finished up their guest house. They asked us if we wanted to ditch city life and rent the guest house. We closed the business, packed up our lives, and moved to Maine. We planted our first garden. We got married after seven years of being engaged. We started North 44 Woodworks, doing shop carpentry and custom product packaging. We worked as farm hands, helping with the bean fields. We wrote an album with Cousin Matt. Later, we bought our own homestead a county away. We got our first chickens and turkeys. We planted a big garden. We rehabbed the old orchard. And then, as luck would have it, we grew way too much shit. We had produce coming out our eyeballs. So I put up an ad on Craigslist. One customer turned into two, turned into five, turned into a steady stream of the nicest customers you'll ever meet. You're gonna need a bigger boat. Keeping in line with the deep-seated fear I have of disappointing anyone ever, we expanded, then again, and again. One garden became three gardens, became eight, and still going. Our secret little homestead in just five years has become a certified organic farm. This all feels like it happened really fast and almost entirely by accident, but we tend to excel under pressure. <laughs>